Welcome back. This is uh, part two of our winterizing the garden. We are going to be focusing on getting this pepper plant into a pot to bring inside as well as a jalapeno plant that's on the other side. I'm going to trim it down, show you everything I'm doing, and hopefully next year we will hit the ground running with some, with a uh, pepper plant that will be several weeks or a month ahead of schedule. So hopefully we'll be harvesting a lot sooner with both the jalapeno and our uh, Carolina Reaper. But just in case, I will be starting peppers from seed for each one of these plants, especially the jalapenos, because we need a lot of those. Uh, we've been making uh, can uh, cowboy candy, and it's just been disappearing in our house. So we're going to get those into the ground, get those inside. And then we have some perennial uh, plants that are out here in the garden that we're going to winter winterize. I have a lot of leftover straw from planting our garlic from last week's video. So we're going to get everything winterized covered with a thick layer of straw and hopefully everything will go smoothly. So let's get started. First thing we have to do is make sure we take all the peppers off the plant and then we're going to do a hard prune. Now you start at the base of the plant and you're going to see it forks and then from there it starts to really branch out. So at the top of each one of those forks, just before it branches out, you're going to trim everything off there. Like I said, this is a hard prune so you're going to be trimming a lot off this plant. Now we're going to dig it out, saving as much of the root ball as possible. Now we're going to be placing this into some fresh potting mix. So what we're going to do is try to shake off as much of this old soil as possible, trying to clear the way for the roots. So when we repot it into the new pot, the roots have all fresh soil to draw nutrients from. Now we're just going to top it with fresh soil. We'll water it in later and add just a little bit of slow release fertilizer for overwinter. Then we'll do the same process for our jalapeno plant. We transplanted all of our strawberries last year into this bed and they've done pretty well. We got a few strawberries but not much but we want to salvage everything and see if we can get everything to come back next year. So we're going to add a nice thick layer of straw about two to three inches and keep it and hopefully that next year they'll absolutely explode. So the big thing over here is we're going to need new trellises. These are just not going to cut it. Um, I got one runner coming up the center so I'm going to pull this out. There's only the one. It's only the one running. And these are huge. So what I want to do is this is our first year and nothing's produced anything. So we're going to leave these here. Put them into the bed as much as we can and try to cover up as much of this as we can with uh, the straw. It's nice, these are blackberries, but there are no thorns on these. Don't do yours, you eat them. This is our horseradish. It isn't ready to come out of the ground quite yet. Uh, we want the frost to kill off the leaves, so we have to wait probably, we haven't had a hard frost yet, so we have to wait probably another week or two. My guess is sometime in November to kill everything off. Or I could harvest it in spring, but then you have some timing issues. I'd have to get out of here in early spring before everything starts to grow and harvest everything I need 
and then hopefully let everything dry a little bit and then plant it back into the ground before everything starts growing again. Now it would just be easier for me in the next like month or so, sometime in November more than likely, pick everything out of there, pull it all, harvest what I need to for uh, what we're gonna use and then take some of those rhizomes or those offshoots and put those aside and that will be what we'll use to grow our horseradish next year. So I do like using it in this grow bag. It makes it a lot easier and easier to contain because the stories I've heard about horseradish when you're growing it from other people uh, is that they do have a tendency or it does have a tendency to take over. So I don't want that to happen. I don't want to take over one of my garden beds because I missed something. So we're going to harvest it this way. I'm more or less just going to dump out the soil into one of the garden beds and take everything out. That way I'm not damaging any of the roots or leaving anything behind. So stay tuned for that. Um, we are gonna be doing some final cleanup, getting everything inside. A lot of the things that we're bringing inside are gonna be our peppers. Obviously we talked about that earlier and you saw me do that. But then we're gonna be, we have a bunch of rosemary. So I'm gonna bring all the rosemary inside, put those under grow lights so they'll be in there all year. And now we're gonna work on pulling and getting everything out of our water garden. And this is one of the reasons why we have this feature. We're able to drain. A lot faster. Smelly too. You can see how much this has sunk. When I filled this up in the beginning of the season, I filled it all the way up to here. And it is a full rung down, so that's roughly about two to three, probably three inches. Now I did take a lot of soil out when I removed the plants, the all the peppers, but that's gonna be all a new top layer of compost next year. One of the things I was seeing a lot of is a lot of random tomato plants that were growing in the different garden areas. And that is from this right here. Random tomato droppings inside. So, I already cleaned the one up over here, got all the tomatoes out of it. So now I'm gonna start working over here, clear up all the tomatoes I can by hand to try to minimize the amount of random tomato plants that grow here next year. Now one of the things we're doing is we're not tilling up the garden bed itself. All we're doing is kind of moving things around so it's level, so we don't have any pockets of water sitting or any compacted dirt. We kind of spread it all out. Again, not tilling it. That's gonna happen in the spring when we add our compost layer on top and then we'll till everything and mix it all up. So we're just gonna finish picking up all of our trash, and waste from the garden, throw it all away, and that'll be it. Clean up for this is pretty easy because all it is is pea gravel holding the pots down. Here's all the stuff we're pulling from the garden and all the stuff we're going to be storing inside this year. Canna, raspberries, that is a, that's an Eastern red bug we grew from a bare root. It was only about six inches long and it's about two or three feet now. It's got three branches coming off of it. That's probably about three years old, so we'll probably end up planting it next year. Hold on, bud. And some more rosemary. And you just look and see what's going on?
And we got all of our cages. Uh, we pulled everything and moved it off to the side. Some are weather resistant, so they're fine for being outside. And then the rest of them are plastic. I'm okay with the metal ones staying outside. Most of them are galvanized steel. They spend their winters outside anyway, and they're meant for fencing, so they should be good to go to stay out here. But some of the plastic and some of the other tomato cages will be moving into our garden shed back over here. Other than that, the cages are all gonna stay out here, wood. And you can see everything is bedded down with straw for a winter. You can see how compact our blueberries and raspberries are and how much of an explosion our blackberries have been. We did remove the, the trellises from that. We're gonna have to come up with some sort of new trellis system for this, because this is not gonna work for what we had. We need something much bigger and potentially permanent that's gonna be big enough to hold the amount of uh, the vines that are coming off this and allow this thing to completely expand and explode. So that'll be a project for over winter to try to figure out. So that's a wrap for our growing season. Everything's been planted, everything has been pulled. Now it's just the last final trip of getting everything into the shed and we're done. We're gonna lock up the garden for the winter season. And uh, I think maybe the only thing I'll come back in here is to bring a leaf blower and blow out all of the uh, leaves. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Stay tuned, we do have a lot more coming with uh, planning for the season. We obviously made a lot of mistakes and we're gonna go over uh, probably around the first of the year, the correction to those mistakes and how we're going to do things different in the garden. I'll go over a planning and draw up a map and plan out the beds. So that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.